You're listening to the Bob and Bo Show. Here are your hosts, Ty Bob and Ty Bo. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I am Ty Bob. You can follow me on Twitter at Ty underscore Bob underscore. We've got Ty Bo in the building. Follow him in the show at Bob in Bo Show. And Sean is also here. Make sure to give him a quick follow at Sheen1440. Uh, if you're listening uh, on audio, we thank you. Make sure to go check out our YouTube, Bob and Bo Show. Uh, if you're if you're li- watching us on YouTube, make sure to drop us a comment. Um, let us know what you think of the episode. We've got maybe some power rankings coming up. So let us know how we do there. Uh, and make sure to leave us a list of Tybo's top five that you can catch in our Chiefs only shows. This week... I don't know if it can top. I don't know if it can top last week's witching hour. We had too many games with comebacks, overtimes. It was absolutely wild. But I tell you what, this week's slate is looking very, very nice. Before lots we get to lots far, of evenly matched teams, I feel yes. like evenly matched. There are a lot of bad teams playing other bad teams. Yeah. And there are a lot of good teams playing other good teams. We don't know which way it's going to go. But I think Sean is here to tell us how he thinks fantasy football will go this week. Well, fantasy football is pretty good this year. One and one in both leagues I'm in. Uh, have a few of these players in my teams, actually. So they have been either performing or not performing, if you've been following along. So we're going to switch up to a player that I think will start performing big right now, and it will continue through the rest of the year. That player is a Mr. Drake London, wide receiver from the Atlanta Falcons. Wow. This man right now, through two weeks, has been targeted 19 times. It's 34 catches and is averaging about 80 yards a game. He had one touchdown last game. <clears throat> and right now he's clearly Marcus Mariota's favorite receiver to go to. He is rostered in about 89% of ESPN's leagues that he's in. So he could still be out there for you. If not, hopefully you're not playing him in the near future. But I just want to go up in one quick fact for him. He's been targeted on 37.3% of his routes. Thirty-seven points. That's insane for a That's rookie. A lot. Do you know for a tar- rookie? Do you know what his target share is, Sean? Off the top of your head? <sighs> Not off the top of my head, but I believe it is leading the Falcons because they are nowhere close oh, to yeah, anybody yeah, else. Yeah. Wow. And the the league, honestly, the last couple of years has a history of a rookie wide receiver, you know, just having a monster year. Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. I know Drake London isn't a LSU guy, but you know he's got that opportunity. Really, like if they're going to keep giving him that kind of attention in their offense, um, I, I think you got good points there, Sean. They're going up uh, against the Seahawks this week, and their secondary has been very, very shaky. So go ahead, even and look for... even though I know it's biased because he's on your fantasy football team. Hey. Well, I think he so, makes some good points. If if you look the at the way that the there. Falcons are, are are playing, they have no idea. Like they they've learned how to use Cordero Patterson, but they're down in so many games that you can't really rush the ball with them. You've got a, a tight end, an absolute unicorn who runs a four four at six foot six, and they don't know how to utilize him in the passing game. Uh, Arthur, the the head coach Arthur, I, like he is going to get himself out of here because he doesn't know how to utilize the actual offense a, as a full unit just specific individual parts. Drake London's one of those guys that uh, out of two games, he's clearly learned how to utilize. I think that's a solid pick for this week. I got one more player for this week as well. If you have a quarterback that's hurt, maybe look at Carson Wentz. As much as we want to rag on him, the commies will be down in games, so he will have to pass it. And I think the commies honestly have one of the best wide receiving trios in the NFL right now. Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, and Curtis Samuel. That is a Carson solid... Wentz has one more point than Jalen Hurts in fantasy football right now. He's a third-ranked quarterback in the ESPN. 30 points a game. He is rostered in only 67% of leagues in ESPN. So look for him. He could be a solid flyer option for you. He will always perform for you. He already got snatched up in our league. Thank you. That was me. Oh god damn it, Sean! You see, this is just all bias. You're just gonna, feeding into your own fantasy it. team. It's good. It's a good year for fantasy, man. That's what I'm going for. You also have Sammy. Was that bias from week one? No, I did not did have not. Sammy. Okay, definitely okay. not. 
That would be a bad choice. Everybody else has been <laughs> on his team, though. Everybody get get creative, Sean. Come on. Hey. Next week. I'm just extremely bitter because I lost by three points last week. But I'll look at I'll look at your team and see if I can find a player on there. I don't I don't need you to. <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, I don't know if anybody can. Shut up. Well, that'll do it for fantasy football segment of the week. We do have our games of the week. And last week, they're pretty solid. We've got some good ones coming up this week. Uh Sean, I believe it is your pick. Uh, to take first this week? Oh, I'm going to go with one of the most exciting teams this year and a team that always struggles in prime time, and that's the Lions versus the Vikings. The Lions truly are a team out of nowhere. Last year was all mental training for this year from Dan Campbell, and they are exciting football to watch. Vikings will actually be playing in daytime, so Kirk Cousins may be playing a little better. Who knows? I'm looking for them to look for Justin Jefferson a lot on Sunday. And all I can say is this is going to be a high-scoring matchup. Division rival. Nothing can get better than that. No, I forget the Lions are in that division. They're going to take first place this year, man, if they keep playing like this. And Campbell's got them moving in the right direction. Uh, I think for me, I'm going to have to take the Jags versus the Chargers. Um, Both teams one and one. Jags have looked solid. It hasn't been the greatest competition, but they have looked solid in both of their games. Uh, Very high scoring. Trevor Lawrence is looking very good uh, with a doubleheaded monster of uh, uh, Etienne and uh, Robinson in the backfield, uh, both moving and shaking down the field. Uh, defenses looked all right. The Chargers, they're no joke. They're no joke. We know how good they are. Um, but it, it would be uh, uh, put that week one loss to the commies to the side. Uh, their week two big time victory against the Colts. We'll see if they're for real this week. Chargers got to make a statement, bro. Yeah, they do. It is a big game for the Chargers and for the Jags. Chargers either need to make a statement, like you said, or the Jags are going to show the rest of the league that uh, they're not going to take uh, the first pick overall for like the ninth year in a row. <laughs> so my pick for game of the week, um, I mean, this is the game that everybody's <clears throat> watching. Uh, Bill's Dolphins. Um, it's going to knock one of the undefeated teams off in the AFC, which is good for the Chiefs. Um, I think it's going to be fairly high scoring. Um but I think I think the Dolphins are going to struggle a little bit against that defense. But, you know, you can't count them out of the game because of the weapons that they have and the way that they played last week. Um, they were, you know, they're down by a ridiculous amount going into the fourth quarter. So it's, uh, it's going to be a fun one to watch. Um, this is in Miami, though, isn't it? I believe it is a Miami Hard Rock Stadium game. Yeah, so – Bills are at a slight disadvantage, but that defense has held their opponent to under 10 points or 10 points the last two weeks. They look pretty solid. So I still think I still think both teams score over 20 points in this game. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what uh, Tua will do against that defense, against a solid defense. Is he going to start skipping passes to people, or is he going to show us what he showed last week? Wait and see. You don't know what the lefty's ever going to bring. This week on the Bob and Bo Show, we're we're bringing a new segment to you. Right now, it is the Bob and Bo Show's way too early power rankings. Now, coming up here in just a just a few seconds, uh, but I wanted to preface this: this is the way too early power rankings. We are stealing this from other shows. Um, it is our collective thoughts on who the top 10 is it's not just one person speaking out here we went through this diligently and this is the best power ranking you are going to find across the land it's not going to be on <laughs> fox espn Stephen a sirius xm doesn't matter this is the best power ranking you're going to find right here folks and if you have a problem with it deal with it oh hit good up, one, Sean. just hit up tybo at bob and bo show let him know uh, how much his ranking sucks. Give it to me. <laughs> so, 
Starting off at number 10, we got the Vikings. They better hope they don't play a whole lot more games uh, under the lights because Kirk Cousins shows that's where they're going to sink. Um, but right now, the weapons that they have, they still make top 10. Number nine. We have the Rams right here. They're clearly on a Super Bowl hangover, but they have the players that will come together by the very end of the year and figure it out. Sean McVay is too good of a coach for them. Number eight. Ravens. Um, crap the game away against Miami, but that offense still looks good. Uh, hopefully they get guys back on defense. Um, they stay healthy because um, they can definitely be a contender. Number seven. We're going to go with the Buccaneers. The offense still looks a little bit shaky there with Tom Brady and that offensive line. That defense is really making the Buccaneers survive right now. Number six. We got the Dolphins. They pull off an incredible comeback. They're they're two and zero right now. Um, could change after this week. Defense has playmakers that I feel like are going to make plays during the season, and that offense speaks for itself. Number five. We're gonna have to go with the Lions here. Dan Campbell has really got them playing well. That offense is really going well. Amon Ross, St. Brown, DeAndre Swift. They played the Eagles tight. They played the Commanders, our commies, very, very well. They're taking it to the next level this year. Number four. We're going Chargers. Um, they got to beat the Jags uh, or else they're going to fall on this list. Um, but they played us well, and we're one of the best teams in the league. Number three. We're going to go with the Eagles here. They clearly look like the best team in the NFC right now. They are – playing some of the best football they can right now, running the ball, passing the ball. They're doing whatever they want on offense. Number two. Unfortunately, it's the Chiefs. We have the best quarterback in the league, but we don't have the best defense. The number one team in the league. The Buffalo Bills. Listen, they're just too good right now. They're coming out firing on all cylinders. And that Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs combo right there is just too deadly right now. Like I said, man, that is the best power ranking you're going to find anywhere. Nobody's going to do it quicker or better. Put a pin in it. (laughs) Uh, These teams are going to set up for some very good games coming up. Uh, Without a doubt, we are going to see some good games coming from these guys. And that will lead us into our pick them for the week. Uh, This is very interesting. As we talked about just a little bit earlier, we do have... Um, we've got some games going on, folks. We've got some good ones. Now, right now, we've got the Thursday night game going on. We uh, did not pick this one on air, but we did pick it off air. Tybo and myself took the Browns while Sean took the Steelers. It's currently at halftime. We will have to see how that one goes. Obviously, all three of us did take the Chiefs, so that starts off our noon hour games. Next up in the noon hour, We've got one of the games of the week, the Detroit Lions headed into Minnesota, taking on mid-Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. Tybo, who you got? This is tough, man. It's a noon game. Uh, It's going to be a real big test for the Lions. Uh, But I don't know know if they can win. Um, I'm going to go Vikings. Got the number, you've got the number five team in the Bob and Bo Show's power rankings losing to the number 10. They're on the road. And and Kirk Cousins is playing where he's comfortable. If we're buying into this conspiracy theory, yeah, you know, I, I truly don't believe Kirk Cousins is gonna have the same showing that he did last week. He's he's well known for his touchdown to interception ratio and like they have some of the best weapons in the league. I'm, um, you know, I don't know if the Lions have it all figured out right now. Fair enough. That's where me and you differ. I'm gonna have to go with the Lions. I think they're playing so well for Dan Campbell. They're buying kneecaps off for him. They're doing whatever they can. He is a lightning rod for them, and I just see them going on and on and really taking over this division. For a little bit of the year. Maybe not winning it at the end, but definitely leading it for a little bit at some point. Lions. I'm also going to take the Lions. Uh, there's a lot of questions for the Vikings. Uh, 
honestly, we know what they can do on offense. Even if they do have a one game hiccup, that's never going to change. The defense is going to be the main question uh, that remains. Uh, and, and it did not look good against the Eagles last week. Next up in the noon hour, we've got the Philadelphia Eagles heading into Washington, taking on the commies. Eagles are six and a half point favorite. Eagles. Eagles. Carson wins. As much as I want to rag or cheer him on for fantasy football, they're still going to be down. He's still going to pass the ball. The Eagles are just too much for them right now. I know you had uh, uh, Carson Wentz, a player to watch out for in your fantasy football players of the week, Sean. Uh, but this is a week that you should probably uh, be faded because it's gonna, it's not gonna be pretty. Taking the Eagles as well. Next up in the noon hour, we have got the Houston Texans headed into Soldier Field, taking on the Chicago Bears. Bears are a three-point favorite. Give me the Bears here. This is the week I'm joining Mills Mafia. I'm going with the Texans this week. <laughs> About time. I think I'm also going to run with the Texans. They're getting figured stuff figured out, and I am a big, big Lovey Smith fan. Uh, next up in the noon hour, we've got another game of the week. It is the Buffalo Bills headed into Hard Rock Stadium, taking on the lefty Tua and the Dolphins. Bills are a five-point favorite. As they should be. Give me the Bills. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Bills this week. Uh, I don't trust Tua against this defense. Bills by a million. It's going to be ugly. Uh, the over-under on that is 52 and a half. I'd say take the over. Don't fade me. Uh, <laughs> next up in the noon hour, we've got the Las Vegas Raiders headed into Nissan Stadium, taking on Tannehill and the Titans. Raiders are a two-point favorite. I'm just doing this for fun. Raiders are going to Raider in the Titans. <laughs> I think the Raiders are one of the best 0 2 teams out there, and I'm going to have to go with them. I am also going to jump on the Raiders here to get a win in the column. Titans just don't look right to me. Next up, we've got uh, Lamar Jackson taking the Baltimore Ravens into Gillette Stadium, taking on Mac Jones and the Patriots. Surprisingly, Baltimore's only a two and a half point favorite here. That don't matter too much. Uh, Lamar's going to ball out. Uh, don't see them giving up four touchdowns to Mac Jones in the fourth quarter. Uh, give me the Ravens. <laughs> Let's go with the Ravens as well. They're just too much for Mac Jones. I'm going back and forth here, man, because that Bill Belichick defense actually kind of stepped up, although it was the Steelers and they're, the step is like two inches. Uh, probably going to have to take the Ravens in this one. Lamar is passing incredibly right now. Next up in the noon hour, we've got the Cincinnati Bengals headed into New York to take on the Jets. Bengals here are a six-point favorite. Now, the last time they were a six-point favorite was last week. They were actually a seven-point favorite, lost to the Cowboys. Yeah, this is really a tough one for me. Um, do the Jets have any pass rushers? Uh, they've got a decently young and solidified group across the entire defense. I don't no nobody uh, steps out to me specifically off the top of my head. Um uh, but I do believe Sauce Gardner should be back this week as well, going off with the injury. So uh, let me venture and say Raiders and Bengals stay winless this week. Give me the Jets. Oh, I like that. Wow. Uh, I want to go with that, but Joe Biden Burrow over here. I <laughs> what? I gotta go with the Bengals. <laughs> he just He's forgotten so how to play, there. man. Yeah, he just doesn't sleepy look the same. Joe. He's forgetting some stuff over here. I love it. J E T S Jets, Jets, Jets. Rob Sala has got that defense moving. Last Gary game Wilson in the... looks good, dude. Michael yeah, Carter does. looks good. Dude, Brees, Brees Hall moving the ball. That team's moving a little bit with old yeah. Joey Flacco back there looking 99 years old. 50 plus pass attempts a game. Bound to win every time with that. 
Last game in the noon hour, we've got uh, J. Bo and the Saints headed into Carolina, taking on Baker and the Panthers. The Saints here are only two and a half point favorites. If that tells you anything, do we know if Alvin Kamara is playing? At the moment, uh, I we we don't know. Uh, I have not checked the injury report for Alvin Kamara. Uh, you give me your pick, and I'll see if I can find it. That has a lot to do with the pick, man. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. This is tough. You don't I like Jameis is... over there? I don't like Jameis or Baker, bro. Alvin <laughs> was a light <laughs> Alvin was a light practice on uh Wednesday and Thursday. He has not been uh given a definite uh sign on if he'll play or not. Okay, so Raiders and Bengals will stay winless, but the Panthers will not. Let me get, let me, let me get the Panthers. Wow. I don't like the Panthers. Matt Rule is definitely on the hot seat right now. He is he's tipping his plays. Everybody knows what he's doing. He's tipping his plays. I'm going to go with Saints. I'm also going to take the Saints here to piggyback off of Sean there. If nobody watched it, Dan Orlovsky is one of the best people in the world at breaking down film. If you see this week – that Christian McCaffrey is one yard behind Baker Mayfield in the shotgun position, they, it will be an RPO. If he is lined up with Baker Mayfield, it will be a pass. Take that to the bank. Matt Rule has two games after this to get it right or he's out. You don't get called out in the, in the media like that and then, like, continue to do that. I don't, I don't think he, like – I don't think he's a chance he keeps messing it up that bad. We'll see. I don't know, man. We'll we'll have Not to see good. how it goes. It's never good with them. Going into the three oh five games that are our last game of the week. It is Jacksonville headed into SoFi Stadium, taking on the tenants uh, or the renters, the Chargers. Uh, the Chargers are a seven point favorite here. I don't think I can pick the Jaguars to beat the Chargers. The Chargers are going to win. Yeah, Chargers are going to make Trevor Lawrence look bad chargers across the board i don't feel like uh that that jags offensive line is solidified enough to stop bosa or mac here they're gonna eat all day long next up in the 325 hour we've got the los angeles rams headed into phoenix taking on kyler murray and the cardinals uh kyler's got to be hurting right now because the modern warfare 2 beta is out uh (laughs) and that is why the rams are three and a half point favorites Oh man, I don't know. Uh, one almost lost a a game last week in the final minutes, and the other made a pretty impressive comeback. These these are always good games. Rams Cardinals has been really have been really good games in the past few years. Um, uh, I think I'm gonna have to go Rams. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go Rams too without DeAndre Hopkins for the Cardinals. I just I just don't see that happening. Probably gonna miss this one, but I'm gonna go ahead and take the Cardinals here. Uh I think they get back on track with that. Uh next up in the 325 hour, we've got the Atlanta Falcons headed into the 12th man stadium, taking on Pete Carroll and the Seahawks because they don't have anybody else. Uh Seahawks here are a one point favorite. I'm taking the Falcons in this game. They've scored 27, I think, in both of their games. Like, it's been competitive. They just don't know how to close a game. Um, the Seahawks haven't done anything impressive this year. Um, Besides beat the Broncos. I, even in that win, like, Geno Smith <laughs> threw for, like, 170 yards. Like, they their offense doesn't have a whole lot of production. Uh, they don't look great to me. And the Falcons at least have, like, they have playmakers and they have things that look promising to me even at 0-2. So uh, give me the Falcons. I'm going to have to go with the Falcons as well. I think uh, Drake London's really going to go off this week, and I think that Arthur Smith may finally figure out how to use Kyle Pitts, Pitts for once. But who knows with that. It'll be an ugly game, but that'll make it Falcons across the board. 
Uh, last game in the 325 hour, we have got the Green Bay Packers heading into Tampa, taking on Tom Brady and the Bucks. He did not miss practice this Wednesday. He was there. He said no to marriage counseling and went to practice. <laughs> He's not going to let the media get the better of him. Tampa Bay's a one point favorite in this game. I expect this to be a, a duel of aging quarterbacks. Um, that don't have a whole lot of weapons. <laughs> um, I Mike Evans is suspended. Um, is Godwin playing? Is he still oh, hurt? I think so. He he's expected to be in, but could be on a snap count. So I mean, this is a this is a true toss up for me. Um, I'm going to pick. Aaron Rodgers in the Packers. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Aaron Rodgers in the Packers as well. Uh, all the Bucks have right now is their defense, really. Julio's hurt on two, pretty sure too. Honestly, I think this is gonna come down to a field goal and or a doink, but a former soccer player will be the one that wins this game for the for the Packers. I think it is gonna be a close one. Both teams look bad. Every single receiver for the Green Bay Packers has been listed as a light practice or a did not practice Wednesday and Thursday. Not not much difference on uh, uh, for the Bucks. They did bring in Cole Beasley. We'll have to see how Mr. I won't take a shot um, will take taking shots from Tom Brady for once. Um, be up up to see, but I'm going to take the Bucks here. Uh, now, our Sunday night game is going to be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Denver Broncos in Denver. 49ers led by Jimmy G are one and a half point favorite here. Call me crazy, but that run pass call from the sidelines has been helping them out because <laughs> the Broncos have one of the best defenses in the league right now as far as like yards allowed per game. Um, granted, your opponents have been the Seahawks and the Texans. Um, but that 49ers offense, you know, they're back to Jimmy G. They don't have a great run game. I'm taking Broncos. Oh, also, You're Russ crazy. is all, I am crazy, but Russ is also, um, top 10 in yards passing, might even be top five. Um, against the Texans and the Seahawks. I'm just, I'm just saying the the 49ers don't look all that great either. They lost to the Bears. They lost to the Bears in a monsoon with Trey Lance. Trey Lance has not looked too good at all this year for the five quarters that he played. They looked a lot better with Jimmy G throwing the ball. They could actually throw the ball downfield semi accurately. They were opening up for Debo. They were opening up for Brandon Ayuk. I think they just know what's going on with Jimmy G there. They trust him in the passing game a little bit more. He's a little bit more accurate than Trey Lance was. And I do not trust Nathaniel Hackett. He's going to blow something in this game. I'm going to go for Niners. Sean, you had the Niners. Uh, Tybo, I'm sorry, you had the Broncos, correct? Mm -hmm. That is going to make it two for the Broncos and one for the Niners. Uh, I don't trust Crazy. Hackett, but Russ knows what he's doing against the Niners, and it's not like that team's very good anyways. I don't know. Um, last game of the week, wrapping up quickly, we have got the Dallas Cowboys headed into MetLife. There will be two games at MetLife this week. Wild scenes. Oh, uh, Cowboys crazy. are heading into MetLife, taking on the Giants. <laughs> Surprisingly, Giants are 2-0 and and a one-point favorite in this game. Call them Dabble's dogs, dude. <laughs> the Giants. The G man, I think Saquon uh, is just going to go bananas this week. <laughs> All right, guy. <laughs> I'm also going to take the Giants. Uh, we've got a lot of the same picks this week. My neighbor, who is from New York, has been hounding me that the Giants are going to the Super Bowl uh, since they beat the Cowboys. Okay. I, All I right. don't know where in the world he gets this, uh, but he thinks they are also Dabble's dogs. Have they, <laughs> have they seen <laughs> Danny Dimes play football? <laughs> Man, he he's a little on the older side. He could be going senile, but 
they are two and zero, oh, and we've picked them to go three and zero. Oh, so we'll have to see how it goes. That'll wrap it up for this week's show. Make sure to, uh, if you haven't yet, go back and listen to our Chief show uh, on YouTube or on all audio platforms. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and uh, like, subscribe, review, all that good stuff. Um, we appreciate you listening. Make sure to check back in on Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, uh, to uh, catch our review of uh, the uh, the week three slate. As always, go Chiefs. Go Chiefs!